So here we go. Another Raider hideout. And what we're looking at is this large factory here. With many discarded trucks and cars outside of it. Trucks that contain kegs are the finest stout that can be purchased for the cheapest price. Go in it stout. The tree and cars beside it appear to have been carrying waste. And the dog you see walking there has been here every single time. And it's creeping me out. It's like that cat out of the Matrix. This place is, of course, the Beantown Brewery, home of Gwyneth Stout, and also a story that links with that of the Federal Ration Stockpile, though we shall look at every detail regarding that area in another video. For now, let's take a gander. Immediately as we go in, we can see signs of not only maintenance being carried out here, but also of habitation, in the form of a sleeping bag. Of course, other signs in the form of us getting shot at will also be apparent shortly after we enter. The place has been occupied by a group of raiders, and they have rigged up various traps throughout the place. Traps that, um, 99 times out of 100, they end up triggering, so don't ask me what the point was there. I have not a baldies. As we progress down to the factory floor itself, we can appreciate the scale of the machinery here. The largest vats were, I assume, used to actually mix and ferment the stout with the smaller ones attached to the conveyor belt used to store and distribute the finished product. Some of the belts are actually quite empty, though this one is not. Now in the past, we have discussed a theory that many teddy bears in the game actually represent the corpses of children. I don't believe that is the case for this particular one. I think it's more likely that the raiders just set it up when they were shit-faced. The rest of the belt looks like it has seen more use. Many of the bottles are empty, as if they were drank straight after being filled up. And this could in fact be the case, as it's unlikely the raiders wouldn't try and take advantage of everything this place had to offer. Also, please drag your attention to the hazardous material sticker. Why would hazardous material be put into stout? I understand the sticker next to that one, but this one is a little dodgy in my opinion, and it's the first indication that maybe everything wasn't completely kosher here at the Beantown Brewery. As we move behind two of the what I shall henceforth refer to as fermentation vats, we can find an interesting setup. A teddy bear with some coffee, hat on, enjoying a nice read of a newspaper. Or at least it was until I knocked it over. It was an accident, I swear. One of these days we shall have to do teddies of Fallout and round up the best ones and compare them, as there are uh, there's some pretty fucked up ones out there. At the far end of the factory floor, we can find this small, fenced off area. Present inside is a lot of beer, many empty crates, and some tin can alarms. Now, since it's all still here, one of the raiders had to have been using this. However, I find their arrangement odd, as why would they feel the need to alarm where they slept, considering they were indoors and surrounded by other raiders? I also think it's possible that they used the cam station to make some beer, possibly separate from the factory machinery, if it was still working. Based on what we find later, I might know who was here. Up the stairs, beside that fenced off area, we find our first corpse. It is surrounded by empty crates and open beers, so the stout seems to have been their last drink. Now since it's unlikely they did this while the rest of the place was still opened and operational, they must have survived the bombs, came here, and then drank until they either died from radiation poisoning, alcohol poisoning, or something else. I'm not too sure where the rest of the empty bottles are, as, based on the volume of discarded crates, there should be many more. The raiders could have collected the bottles to reuse them, but then why did they bother to leave the body? Taking one of the staircases up from the factory floor, and turning right at the top, we come to a crumbling brick passageway that leads to a, a really strange room. It's filled with rows of display cabinets and empty casks, and bottles, several of which are actually in the display cases. Now this begs a few questions. What the fuck were they displaying? Who thought this was a good idea? and who was bland enough to be interested in this shit. The most interesting thing here are the bottles set up for bowling, and that is only due to post-war shenanigans. The room leading on from this one seems to have been a gift shop, and no gift shop is complete without a bastard mannequin and a shitlord, Symbols Monkey. The monkey has some piled up bottles behind it, and it itself serves to wake up the sleeping person, now a dead person, in the corner. Once again, there is a lot of beer here, likely the only thing this room sold, and I'm sure the reader was partial to a bottle or two. So after you have executed the monkey for the crime of excessive creepiness, you can take a look at the terminal here, which details the tour, of which this room was part of. 
Now why the tour only happened once an hour if it only lasted 5 to 6 minutes is a mystery, though no more of one than why anyone would enjoy this. Also, if you fall and die, too bad. This place is not liable somehow, I don't really know how that would work legally. I also love, I love, how the complimentary tasting costs 5 dollars. I do not think however, that what they believe that word meant lined up with the word's actual meaning. If we go back to the stairs we originally took up to this floor, we can go left this time instead of right. This brings us up into a surprisingly beer free room, with a couch people probably passed out on anyway, possibly in their own vomit. We can find one skull in here, which suggests there was another body. Now I don't know if it got moved by an explosion, or I knocked it over, or what happened. But since the rest of it's not here, we can't really infer what actually happened to them beyond saying that they did die here. Moving through the next room, past a dead mannequin, of course, we come to a room that has a hole in the floor, leading down to the museum, or whatever the shit that was meant to be. Judging from the terminals present here, this was either admin or management. Only one terminal is present here that actually works, and it contains four entries. Unfortunately, entries 1, 2, and 3 are all corrupted, providing us with no new info. Just remember that we click through each of them. Entry 4 is projections and how seals will go in the future. According to this entry, they were watering down the stout, the shits, all to save money. It also comes off as a bit cruel or elitist. It point blank says they want to push a certain type on poorer people because they buy more beer. Gee, I wonder why the fuck that is. Now I notice how we had to go back through every entry we clicked. It appears Bethesda messed up here, and each click opened up a copy of the directory for the terminal, instead of just saying the data was corrupted. Now we can take one of the walkways across to the final part of this brewery, to what I assume was the manager's office, based on the elevator. An elevator that provided the only way to get up there, so... If the power went off, what was the plan exactly? A copy of Picket Fences can be found near the trunk, and a safe is present here also, though it's the terminal that interests us. This terminal belonged to Tower Tom, and the first is called Trouble. He is run into the same roadblock that many raider gangs eventually encounter, a lack of food. He mentions Sparta at BADFTL, and we shall cover that one day, but for now, all we need to know is that they are subordinate of Tower Tom. They also still have beer, hinting the production may still work. Then we come across Lily and Red Tourette's story, the leaders of a raider gang in the ration stockpile I previously mentioned. He says he needs to make a move there soon to secure supplies. Fucked up bad talks about said move, and it didn't go well. Most of their troops got taken out, the only consolation of which is less mouths to feed. They managed to secure some hostages, which he believes they can trade for food, but he doesn't think they'll get a lot for them. In the third entry, Jackpot, it turns out he was wrong. One of the hostages was Red's sister, Lily, which means he has a much better bargaining chip than he initially thought. He's prepared to cut her up if needs be. So much food shows us that it went well. He was able to extort a large amount of food from Red, with Lily's life in the balance as he did so. He then mentions two areas we should be familiar with, Corvega and DB Tech. I assume everyone knows about Jared in Corvega, and we will talk more about him one day. I already covered DB Tech in another video, but if you remember, it was run by Bosco, who was quite mad by the time we dealt with him. The next entry is elegantly titled, Fuck, and everything is going wrong. It appears Lily got free from her restraints in the night, and attacked Tom. In a panic, he retaliated, and ended up killing her. Not sure where he shot her that he thought it was her leg. He says he needs to cover it up, or he will lose his source of food from Red. Problem Solved tells us how this genius took care of things. Sent all his people out in a fake run, and crammed Lily's body into one of the vats? Jesus. He thinks it improved the flavour? Ugh. This at least tells us that they were still using the vats and other equipment here to make beer. He wants to forge letters to try and pretend to be her, but I really don't see that ending well, or going well. So unfortunately, I killed Red before I got here, and this bastard had time to celebrate. On the bright side, I killed him shortly after. So yeah, the balance has been restored to the world. The one after that is about Jared, and it appears after you kill him and Corvega, which I did, with great amounts of gusto. Also worth noting, the recipe for stout is found on the same desk as this terminal, just in case you were looking for it. I also think the fenced off area with all the beer and the alarms could have been Tar Tom's area, 
given that I wouldn't expect any other raider to be able to command such authority to get off their sleeping area. So this was the brewery in which Gwyneth Stout was made. Clearly it was managed by a moron, if the sparse museum and ridiculous tour are anything to go off. It was clearly a money grab, which is odd as they had good projections for the following years. However, they also said they watered down a lot of the stout that they were making, which means the tour could have been a failed attempt to improve sales or the public image. Considering they had to water down to improve sales and target the poor, that doesn't surprise me. Their underhanded tactics and lack of care for customer safety reminds me of a few companies, but I now think that just all the pre-war ones were a bunch of fucking assholes. Tower Tom and his group were the ones that set up here in the wake of the bombs dropping. I am sure this is in part due to the presence of all the drink, which based on the volume near many sleeping areas, they all took part in frequently. From his entry on Lily's remains, it appears that they were taking advantage of the machinery and using it to make more stout. Though I would be curious to know where they got ingredients in large enough volumes that using the machinery was more efficient than using a cam station. Eventually, despite the amount of drink on hand, they began to run low on food and decided to hit the federal ration stockpile, which at the time was under the control of Red Tourette's. Oh, possible bad choice of name there? It they lost many people, but they managed to get a few hostages. One was Lily, and Tom exploited her to get food out of Red, all the while making threats of what would happen if she did not comply. Of course, the worst did happen, and Tom accidentally healed her. He stored her body in one of the vats, ew, and then tried to fake letters from her. Now, I will leave it up to your imaginations, or you know your actual knowledge if you do know how that went, as we will one day look at the other side of this story. For now, we are left with a brewery that was run by morons before the war, and occupied by idiots after it. A brewery that gave as little shits about its customers as the raiders who took it over did about the right to life. I hope you liked this look at all of it. If you did like it, give the video a like, and if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lower or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go onto my subreddit so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon. A pound or a dollar. I ask for no more. Any rewards you would like to see there that I don't have? Message me and I will take a look. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss? Email me at nthapple.business at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, Goodbye.